Hey, here's a quick update on the policy-based access in core. Um, both issues where I add the API and I implement the API in core are reviewed and tested by the community. Tests go green, they all work. I just wanted to give you a quick view of what becomes possible when this is added into core. So as you may or may not know, this um, whole system is based on the flexible permissions module, which is being converted into core. And the group module already relies on flexible permissions. So it already has access to all of these, these goodies, basically. Um, with this system, basically the thing that happens is that you calculate someone's permissions when we are trying to check for someone's permissions and they haven't been calculated before. So it becomes this cache entry where all access policies on a given website can add or remove permissions to the whole set. And then that set gets cached with the right cache contexts so that everyone gets that set of calculated permissions provided they have the same global context variables. Um, so we don't ever have to calculate that more than we need to. <clears throat> Once you get these permissions, then access checks simply work like they always did. But the upside is that you can have your access policies that you currently have in core, such as your permissions that you get from your roles and whether you are user one or not. And you can start adding policies to that or start removing from them. So you could disable user one if you wanted to. Um, now in group, this is a bit more complex. In group, we don't merely hand out permissions in this you know, global context of we're in a Drupal website. In group, we actually have smaller sections of your site. We, we have these groups where you can put a piece of content in and you expect only people who are a member of that group to be able to see that piece of content. This is why this API has a notion of a scope. Um, so in Drupal, you wouldn't care about that. In Drupal, you would simply hand out permissions and it would automatically put it in the Drupal scope. But if you want to hand out permissions in different scopes, such as group or domain or what have you, then you can and you need to specify a scope identifier. Um, simply put, group has three of these. Whether you are a part of a group and a role is assigned to you individually, whether you are part of a group and you happen to have a certain global role, whether you are not part of a group and you happen to have a certain global role. So group has three of these scopes, which is a bit more complex than your general use case. But when I try to determine access to a grouped entity, both on the query and in actual access checks, then I need to check all of these scopes. And I actually, for query access, convert them into um, conditions. So all of that happens in the group module. And you may be asking, OK, that's a lot of information, a short amount of time. Why do I need to know this? Well, you'll see how powerful the Access Policy API is when it's properly implemented by the modules. So to give you an idea, I'm currently on the first domain of my local dev instance, and I can only see the first group. If I go to the second domain and I go to groups, I can only see the second group. Now, if I were to go to admin content, I can only see the page in my second group. If I do that on my first domain, I can only see the page in my first group. This is because of a new module that I created, Group Sites, which basically is one big access policy. It doesn't do much else. It doesn't do any query alters. It doesn't do any access hooks. It just alters your permissions using the Access Policy API. This is really important to remember. It also comes with this toggle that if you uh, set this admin mode on, then basically the Group Sites module doesn't do anything so that you can properly configure your website. So if I toggle this on, you can see how fast that was. And now I can see both pages, even though this is in group uh, one and this is in group two, but I'm only on the domain for group one. If I go to my groups listing now, you can actually see that I have three groups, which is really cool. If I turn that off again, then now I can only see my first group again. And this is based purely on an access policy. So uh, there is no query rewriting, nothing going on. Now, what does that look like if I actually go to the admin content view on the third domain where I'm logged in as the admin so I can do everything. Well, currently the admin mode is off and on the third domain, there are no groups because I didn't tie any to a domain. So what would happen is I wouldn't be able to see any content, no content available. 
And you can see that there is this query rewrite, which basically uh, applies group permissions in a way that it will always return false because you know you have no access. Now, if I turn this admin mode off, you'll see that instantly I can see these pages again. And now there's a lot more being added to the query because now I have different permissions and because my permissions get turned into query conditions, the query conditions alter. But again, I didn't write any code for that. All I did was implement a single access policy. Um, if I log out on the second website, so uh, hold on, log out and log back in as an admin. So now I have full control. I go to views again then it will become a lot more clear what's happening. So if I go to admin content here, then you can see both of them are returned because admin mode is on and you have a lot of stuff added to the query. But if I turn my admin mode off, now we should only show nodes that are within group two. And if we look at the query rewrite now, right now, it becomes more simple. There's one left either join less or fewer. And we actually have this condition now that basically checks your group ID needs to be two. Again, all of this happens with just an access policy. So the module that does this is really tiny. What it looks like right now is if we go to groups, we go to site settings, you have a context provider, which I wrote one basically giving you a group that's tied to a domain. Uh, when we couldn't find a group tied to the domain, we deny all access. That's what you saw on the third domain. Um, you could also set that to do nothing, then nothing happens. And the access policy when we did find a group is that the single group remains active. Now, obviously that's a bit more complex to show, but I can give you a quick peek. So we have this access policy right here. In the alter permissions methods, we're gonna do nothing if the admin mode is on. We only support those three scopes that are defined by group. We add the right cache tags. We're gonna try and get the context value so that would be the group coming from the domain. If we find the domain, we add that as a cacheable dependency. So that caching still works when you toggle the admin mode on or off, or if you switch domain, we try to get that context value and validate that it's a group. And then we call either the access policy when there is a group, so when there is a site or when there is no site. When there is no site, we have one of these, deny all, basically just calls remove items so that all of your calculated permissions are just tossed out, do nothing, does nothing, as you would recall, uh, or as you would expect, sorry. And then finally, the one that happens with the single site, that's complex. I'm not gonna go into detail because this basically, um, it basically, it still removes everything, but it does a lot of massaging to the one single group that remains active and it adds that one back in. That's what's happening here. And that's what you're seeing. So yeah, that is one example of what you can do with the Access Policy API. And as you may have noticed, it's blazingly fast. So it instantly works. So I'm here because it's cached. I turn admin mode off. Boom, it just, it just works. It's awesome.